useState is arguably the most used function in React. In today's video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about useState. This includes why we use it, how to use it. We're going to be taking a look at two code examples. Then I'm going to provide you with a few pitfalls that you have to look out for when you're using useState. Then we're going to wrap up with a few tips that are going to save you a lot of debugging. Now, what is useState? useState is simply a function that is provided with React that allows you to define a variable inside your components. This variable can then be used to render your UI. Now to get started, you need to import it from React. Then you define a state inside your component. Here, for example, we define a state called name and it has an initial value of an empty string. Now here we use these brackets so that we're able to name the variable and the setter function. And lastly, you can bind your state to your UI. For example, here we use the name to set the value of the input. And every time that this input is changed, we update the state with the given value. Now putting it all together, we have our component with the state called name and has an initial value in this case of Yusef. Here we have a label, enter your name, then the input, and then we display the input that was entered. So here, if we change mark, you can see that it's updated automatically. Now let's take a look at a few examples. The first example is a very common one, and this is an on off switch. Here we have a component called toggle where we define a state with an initial value of false. And this state is going to be called toggled. And the function to update this state is called set toggled. Now I'm using this component switch from Radix UI. Radix UI is a UI library that has very beautiful UI components, by the way. And every time that this switch is clicked, we flip the value of toggled. So if it's true, it's going to be false. And if it's false, it's going to be flipped to true. And of course, if it's toggled, we show on, otherwise we show off. And this is the result. Now moving on to a more complex example. Here we have a to-do app. You can add your to-dos to the laundry and do homework. <laughs> and then you can check them and uncheck them. Now heads up, the code for this is a bit more complex than the toggle. But once we go through it, it's going to be really easy to understand. Now here I'm using TypeScript. So we have our type declarations. A to-do item has a text and can be either checked or not. And also has an internal ID. Let's start with this to-do list component. Here we have two states. One is to-dos and one is this next to-do state. The to-dos are basically the to-dos that are shown and this next to-do text is the input that the user has written and not yet entered. So in this case, it's going to be this text here. Now we go over these to do's and we map them to a to do component that receives this to do item. And every time that check is changed, we call this function. And here we have this text input that has uh, the value. And every time that the text changes, we update the value. And when the user clicks, Enter, we call this function add new to do. Add new to do just creates a new to do item with this given text. It updates the to dos. Here we spread the previous to do items and we add the new item at the end. And then we set the new text to empty. We also have this function on check change. And what it does is basically go over the to dos, search for the one with the given ID. And for that, we flip the value of checked. Now I'm going to put a link to this article in the description if you want to take a closer look at the code. Now when using use state, there are a lot of pitfalls that you have to pay attention to. The first is setting the state directly. And the problem with that is that when you set the state directly this way, React will not be notified that there is a new state. So the UI will not be updated. That's why you have to use this given function set state. Then React will figure out that you have provided a new state and will re-render your component. Now, when you're working with arrays, you may be tempted to just call array that add the new element. And that falls to the same category. React will not know that 
there is a new element. So instead of that, you should use this spread operator. Here we are creating a new array using these brackets and we're spreading the previous array and then we're adding the element at the end. And the same thing applies to objects. You should not set properties directly, but rather use the spread operator to override properties. Now, another pitfall that you might fall into is calling set state consequently. Let's take a look at this code. We have a count, which is initialized with zero. And when this button is clicked, we set the count to count plus one and we do this three times. This is a simple example, but you may have a bigger function when you're calling set state on multiple places. Now, when you click on this button, you'll be surprised to find out that the state only increases by one and not by three. Now, the reason behind this is that when you call set state, React doesn't set this value directly inside the state, but rather calls your component. But this time when you call use state, it will provide you with the new value. So here you're always looking at the old value. Now, the way to go around this is instead of using set state with a new value, you provide a function that receives the old value and returns the new value. Now, before wrapping up this video, I want to provide you with a few tips when using use state in your code. The first is that if initial value is undefined, then you can just omit it and it's going to be the same thing. The second one is working with multiple states. It's very easy to lose track of what is happening inside the React component and especially if you're using multiple states. For example, if you have a list of items that are selectable, then you may be tempted to have two states, one holding the items and the second state holding the selected item. Now, while this can work, it can be a bit problematic in case that these items change and you're going to be looking at an old selected item. And the way to go around this is to use a single source of truth. In other words, you only save the bare minimum. So instead of having a state holding the selected item, we're going to have a state holding the selected item ID. And then we can use this ID to find out the selected item. And in this case, if the items change, you're not going to be stuck with an old selected item. And if you're using TypeScript, then you can also provide a type when using use state. And if you provide an initial value that is not undefined, you can omit the type. I hope this video was helpful and see you in the next one.